welcome to the... Wait, what episode number are we on again? The fourth? So let's count. We started with introducing Aiden Coldwell, the protagonist. That's true. And then we looked at some of the monsters we'll find in the city. Exactly. And then it was parkour and creative combat. Wow. All right. Well, four episodes already. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. And if you missed any episodes so far, they're all on our YouTube channel for you to catch up. And we have already shown you so much, it might seem you know everything about the game. But... <laughs> but it's just the tip of the iceberg, so let's dive a bit deeper. Today we're going to show you the vast open world of Dying Light 2. Even though it's violent, brutal and full of death, you'll find there's a surprising amount of beauty and vibrancy in the city. And you will hear a lot about exploration, freedom, interaction and some secrets you may find in the city. And at the end of this episode, there's going to be one secret less because we're going to be doing a big old Hollywood name drop and showing you a new big name in the world of Dying Light 2, Stay Human. Who is it? You have to wait till the end to find out. There are many elements that create the open world of Dying Light to Stay Human. The city has a diverse architecture with historic churches, a business district, modern apartment blocks and old villador. It is full of immersive sounds that fill the streets and there are plenty of characters that you will meet along the way. But it's impossible to talk about all of this at once. So let's start with the places that you will visit and explore during your journey. And for that, I have my next guests. Katarzyna Zielinska, senior concept artist, and Bartosz Januszkiewicz, lead 3D artist. As we know, Villador is unlike any city we have seen before, mostly because the pandemic and the apocalypse have left their marks on the city. But what exactly are those marks? Yes, we wanted the player to feel the past of the city while they're exploring it, uh, to see the city's old glory, uh, this old civilization, its old monuments of its old heroes, big skyscrapers, a TV tower, or uh, old abandoned uh, subway stations, or even an abandoned cargo ship. I mean, the city's haters are clearly behind us, but if you explore it fully, you find old traces uh, of the city just before the spread of the Haram virus. That's very true. Also, during exploration, the player will see that citizens of the city are trying to bring back some of the aspects of, uh, let's say, normality. And yes, they are fully aware that it's pointless, but they are still trying. To give you an example, we'll meet a man who, to add some love to the city, created something that's similar to today's dating apps. We'll also have a chance to listen to an opera singer who sings arias from years ago among the ruins. And those are the colorful characters I mentioned. Anything to add? Yes, it's definitely worth exploring the major vast city of our game. Besides the player's main goals, side quests and missions, you can venture back to the past of the city once called Villador. You can find old traces of newspapers, recordings of the mayor's speeches, books, posters, and many, many other objects that will give you that feeling and history about that whole city. This also, the past can come back in the form of audio cassettes, uh, especially the ones recorded by a father who's desperately seeking to find out what is happening with his daughter. Oh, I know this story very well, and it is quite emotional, right? Yes, indeed. Okay, Bartek, thank you. Kasia, to you as well. Thank you for joining me. Of course, we have just scratched the surface of what's there in the game, but we will let you to discover it by yourself. Speaking of exploration, you can't jump into the city just yet, but you can start by exploring the very place where everything began. Haran from Dying Light 1. And much more, as the Platinum Edition of Dying Light is coming this year to Nintendo Switch on October the 19th. And yes, you can already pre-order it. You can find more details on our website, switch.dyinglightgame.com, so check it out after the episode. All right, back to Villador. We've glimpsed its past, we've seen its present, but what about the future of the city? Here to talk to us about that today is Tom Jabot, the world director of Dying Light 2. Hello, it's good to see you again. So, can we do more than simply explore the city? Yeah, much more. You see, when you first arrive in the city, you discover a decaying metropolis whose past glory you can really just imagine. And if you ask me, there's already beauty in that. But you know what's even more beautiful than a dying city? Seeing it come back to life? Exactly. In the first moments of the game, when Aiden makes it through the wall, the infrastructures are decaying, falling apart or destroyed. But some are 
just dormant, waiting to be revived. So, for example, we have several electrical stations throughout the city, and of course, these have been offline for ages. But if you choose to do so, you can attempt to fix them. And if you succeed, it's a real game changer. With electricity back on, the face of the city changes. Storefronts light up, air vents turn on and help with the navigation, electrical traps become available to fight the infected, and old world remnants just come back to life. And you can explore these if you want to learn about the history of this place. Ooh, and I do want to learn about the history. See, we, we can revive the city, literally, then. Yeah, but there are many more ways in which the choices of the player will shape the world around them. OK, I and mean, what kind of choices are we looking at? Well, actually, as you restore power to the city and help a new civilization rise on top of the old one, you're given one central choice. Which faction are you going to side with? It's called the City Alignment System, and besides gameplay consequences, it will give you the power to shape the skyline of the city, literally. You see, peacekeepers or survivors, according to your choice, will build different structures with a different function, arboring different characters inside of them. OK, um, so that's quite vague. Can we have a specific example in-game of what that might look like? Yeah, for sure. Let's look at this situation. So in this case, for example, we chose to help the survivors. What we're going to see is they are going to build a school on the rooftop. And inside of it is a teacher teaching the kids. Now, let's look at what would happen if I chose the peacekeepers instead. You see, the school is turning into a PK rooftop outpost. And inside of it is now a shopkeeper with whom I can actually trade. And outside is an NPC who may just have a specific quest for me. Ooh, so we've gone from a teacher to a shopkeeper here. I mean, can we actually interact with these NPCs? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, let's look at it this way. If you were to go to a foreign place, you would probably want to talk to the locals to learn about where to go, where to sleep, where to eat, where to party, maybe. It's the same in our city. You can talk to the locals to learn about the insider secret of the city and actually answer some important world questions. You know, just learn to get around in our city. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But what about when the sun sets? Well, then it's a different thing, you know. You will learn about urban legend, folk tales, and actually ranging from campfire stories through songs to rooftop theater. People will always need stories to learn how to live, and it's especially important in our city. And who knows, if you pay attention, maybe you'll realize that some of your actions, some of the choices you make in-game, become stories told on the rooftops. So I could be an urban legend in yeah. the game. That's so cool. I mean, yeah. it sounds like I'm going to need multiple playthroughs to really fully experience the richness of these choices and these worlds. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Thomas. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Leah. If you'd like to start exploring the world of Dying Light 2 Stay Human already, why don't you go to techlandgg.com, where you'll find our whole new section with stories about the citizens of Villador. Check them out now and let us know on our social media what you want to hear about. And while you're there, don't forget to grab other rewards and goodies, such as these new weapons, the Dragon Breath Bow and the Neon Storm Ye Old Trusty. Go to techlandgg.com to get them now. My next guest is the composer of the Dying Light 2 Stay Human soundtrack, Olivier de Rivier. I want to talk about what the main inspiration for the soundtrack was then. The main inspiration came from the creative director, who gave me one word, broken. So that was very inspiring because it's a strong word and we wanted to spread that idea through the city, the main characters, the story, everywhere. Not only th through the story actually, but also through the gameplay. So every action, everything you're doing is supported by music. Okay, that's a pretty strong main theme. Um, does that change depending on who we're talking to or what we're doing? Yeah, definitely what we wanted to do is to have something that will in be impactful for players, that will they'll be recognized. So for instance, you have factions in this game those factions have a musical theme, and then as you are giving away some zones, giving away some uh, buildings, locations, you will give that to a certain faction. Therefore, you will have a certain music attached with the faction, and therefore the music will sound depending on your choices, which is like creating the soundscape of the city out of your choices. Wow, yeah, so you're making it quite a personal experience then as you make your own little mini soundtrack. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. That's really cool, so it sounds quite interactive. It is very interactive. Let's take like um, that. I mean, throughout all the gameplay mechanics we have, there is parkour, of course. And the idea is like on the ground level, there is like death, there is nothing. And so we didn't want to have music there. But on the rooftop, where life is back, we wanted to have a sense of freedom. Mm. So parkour happens there. And you have the music at first, if you just run, 
what happens is like the music is just a soundscape, something that's you know it's not big. But the more moves you do, the more crazy stuff you're doing, jump over the you know the building, the walls, and everything, the bigger the music to such an extent that at some point the music kicks in into a flow, parkour flow. And now you don't even want to stop parkouring because the music is pushing you to do that. So, yeah. yeah. That sounds really like rewarding. <laughs> it is very rewarding. Making your own little awesome soundtrack as you go. Um, well, what about the combat then? Is that the same? Yeah, the combat has the same treatment of being interactive. So you would have to meet you know, any enemy with a special melody, a special theme. But mostly it's about your actions. So if you go and fight and decide to, very, to be very, very blunt, the music will react to this, as well as you know, if you kill somebody, if you get away, like running away from the enemy, and <laughs> everything is supported by the music. Okay, all right. I mean, that sounds really intense. There's a lot going on. It sounds like the kind of thing we need to be able to see and hear together to truly appreciate. So, why not take a look? Wow, I mean, yeah, you can truly appreciate how it's all coming together and making, again, a really personal feeling experience. Um, but does that kind of change depending on where we are in the map, like what location we're in? Right, it definitely changes depending where you are in the game. So uh, it, when you start the game, the music would be sort of like soundscape moody, some little things, you know, we don't want to, to be too, too, too big. But as the player goes and as you understand more of the story, as you getting more empowered, the music grows and grows and grows to such an extent that at some point the music get a new treatment and an orchestra is now supporting your actions and the story. Yes, so now it's the next level for the music. But, you know, however, what we wanted to support as well is the personal story of Aiden. Mm. And for that, we wanted to have a very special sound, very special instrument that will make the sort of like emotional... Uh, okay, well, I mean, I really, really want to know more about this, but I am going to have to stop you there, unfortunately, because we need some secrets for next time, of course. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us, Olivier. It's been a pleasure and I can't wait to hear the soundtrack. Thank you. None of the things that we are talking about here today would be possible without the work of sound level designers, such as Edyta moszynska duralska who makes it all work in the game. Hello, Edyta. Hi. Uh, we are kind of uh, mediators, I think, between the composer, Olivier, and the game. We implemented his uh, music and vision into Dying Light 2, making sure that it all works as it's supposed to. Like, for example, uh, since we have so many teams, uh, the soundtrack must switch to another system whenever player wanders off the main plot. Whenever the, whether they fight walls, search for Mia, parkour or enter dark zone, we see to it that the music gets all the changes and details in exactly those moments Olivier imagined. And we know that music changes when you parkour, fight or enter locations, right? Yeah, sure. But how exactly does it work? So every system works uh, a little bit different. But in fact, it all comes down to creating special zones, scripting and level design. And we had to set up all of this manually. Uh, for example, uh, the music needs to know if uh, the player is parkouring in a dangerous or safe place, if they are jumping over the street, uh, what kind of enemy they are fighting, what's the enemy's faction and rank and so on, so on, so on. And the music uh, knows it's all mostly uh, thanks to special invisible zones that we add inside the game. Okay, invisible zones, this sounds intriguing. So what are they and how many of them are there in the game? Oh, there's so many of them, I, I guess millions, probably. Uh, they are, let's say, um, boxes triggering when the player enters them. Whenever that happens, they tell the music that it needs to change. But, you know, that's the easy part. 
The hard one is to set up them properly and fit them into geometry of the world. So they send the right message at the right moment. I think that the windmill was uh, really challenging in that matter. And why was it so? So as, as the player climbs the windmill, the music changes depending on the height Okay, but let me assure you that players will hear the amazing music and sounds that you have put into the game. Thank you, Edita. Thank you. If you thought the Dying Lights Who soundtrack couldn't get any more impressive, then we have something else to show you. It was played by none other than the London Contemporary Orchestra in the world-famous Abbey Road Studios. Check this out. Generally, I try to get the, the core, the substance of, uh, let's say, a word through an instrument. And this time, uh, I had to go back to my friend Nicolas Bra, who's making instruments out of junks, literally junks. And he created this instrument that could be in the world of Daylight to completely like accurate with all the little details and sort of, you know, the roughness of the instrument. it's time for something special. We already know Aiden, the protagonist of Dying Light 2, Stay Human. And Hakon, who in our game has the face of David Bell, the inventor of parkour. David Bell! Now, let's meet another important citizen. Yeah, and that's the perfect time to show you the surprise we have saved for last. Mm -hmm. You may know her from the Mandalorian series. Or from the famous Sin City. So without further ado, meet Lawan. Though in Dying Light 2, you will know me as Lawan, a warrior of sorts, a very tough woman who is fighting her past and looking to seek revenge on the people who wronged her. Now, what I really love about this game and this character is that how she is is really dependent on you, the player. Is she going to be this rage-filled killer who is obsessed with her goals? Or will she be a night runner who risks her life to save others? It's up to you. Senior writer Piotr Mostowski will tell us more about Lawan. Hello. So let's talk about Lawan. Lawan is uh, one of the strong, self reliant women in the world of Dying Light to Stay Human. Uh, she is an important character with uh, a lot of impact on the plot, but we also wanted her to be way more than that. To be a real person with her own goals, her own motivations, and her own opinions as well. Uh, so if she doesn't like something you do or something you say, she will tell you that and, and she will act on it, um, you know, sometimes uh, even against you, and you will feel the consequences of it. She is her own boss, and her kill list is open, so you don't want to end up on it. But she has a kill list. Uh, no. <laughs> no, she doesn't. I need to know more about that. <laughs> Guys, let's stop here because that's a spoiler. Peter, tell us more. Why did we choose Rosario to become Lawan? 
because the one is uncompromising and she's tough and you are going to have a lot of crazy adventures with her uh, sometimes balancing on the verge of life and death you know and in the process uh, she can become your dearest friend or uh, your enemy at some point so in order to convey all that because there is quite a lot to convey we needed an extraordinary actor and rosario turned out to be just perfect you know and I cannot wait to meet her in game. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Dying Light 2 Stay Human is just a few months away and on February the 4th we'll finally be able to experience its vast and vibrant open world, complex characters and gripping stories. Thank you for joining us today. Next time we'll show you what choices you might encounter in the city and the ways in which you can change the world. Stay safe. Stay human.